If you do a lot of your research searches using a browser, I want to introduce you to a new tool that you can use to organize these searches and save them for later when you don't have time to do your entire organization system. So this is Pocket. To be able to use Pocket, you do have to sign up, but it is what I'm going to show you today is a free service. And so what you can do is basically save your web pages using Pocket and even tag them with different things so that you can come back and organize them later on. To get started, we're going to go to the Save to Pocket extension, and I will have links to how to get to this extension and to how to get to the original web page in the description down below. And what we're going to do is click Add to Chrome. I'm obviously doing this on Chrome, but they do have these available on other browsers as well. And so I'm just going to click Add Extension. And so now it is added in. So I can exit out of this page, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google Scholar, commonplace that I will do my web searches. And so I'm going to search for probably my typical just steroids and eye mobility. If you're having issues with like figuring out what keywords to search for or even what papers to read, check out my 30-day research jumpstart guide. It kind of helps you get started in research and figuring out all of these things. So once we're here, if you're like just doing your research, looking at different things on Google Scholar, you might just be like opening all of these different articles into new tabs. So that's a common thing that I will do is just open up all my articles. And sometimes I'll use the main one to the main page and other times I will use the like link to the text off to the side, but just opening up different articles that might be of interest to read. And so once you get here, my next step is typically to place all of these articles into Zotero. But what if I'm getting interrupted? I don't really know if I'm going to have time to do all of that, organize it, everything like that. And I just want to go, oh, these are things I want to save for later. This is where Pocket can come in handy. So what you can do if this is something that I want to save for later, I can come up to my extensions here. And I'm just going to click this Save to Pocket. And once I've done that, it says save to pocket and I can actually add in tags here. So I can say it will add in a tag like Google Scholar. So saying I got this from Google Scholar, I can add in a tag of steroids and ion mobility. And then I could also potentially add in a tag that says not in Zotero. So then I know whenever I'm coming back, I can go to my tag of not in Zotero, go through and move all these back into Zotero. So I'm going to add in that tag by just adding a comma there. So that is now saved. So I can do that to multiple of these and I can either go to like the PDF. So I can save this. And so I'm going to add in some of those similar tags. So Google Scholar, steroids, I am ability and not in Zotero. And then I'm going to add in one more. So I can add in this guy and add in those same tags. All right. So now that we've added in some of our research, now we can go in and see how this is organized. So I'm just gonna go to my pocket and I'm going to refresh. And so now you can see that all of these are appearing in my pocket. These are the three that I just saved. So now what I can do is I can always just open these up and it will just take me back to the actual page. But if I wanna be able to look at the specific tags that I had and look at all the articles under those, I can go down to my tags and go to all tags. And now what I can do is I can click on these. So I can click on the ones not in Zotero and it's gonna show me, okay, these three that I just added aren't in my Zotero. So from here, I can click on any one of these. And what it's actually gonna do, which I think is really cool, is it basically brings in the text that is relevant to this. So this has a view full text, but it also has an abstract. And now what you can do is also highlight within here and it can save highlights. So I've highlighted this now. And so if I go up to my highlights menu, I'll be able to see the different highlights from different things. Obviously this isn't pulling in the full text because I didn't give it the full text document. But if I'm ready to move it into Zotero, I can always go view my original so once I'm here, I can either use the Zotero connector to get it into Zotero, take it and put it into SciSpace, or go and get like descriptions of it with TLDR this or anything like that are options that I have 
whenever I'm ready to actually do that. I don't have to always do it whenever I'm doing my literature review. So if I go back to saves, so once I'm done with that, I can always come in and edit these tags. So I just have to click on a tag and then I can delete out not in Zotero and save. And then when I refresh, that no longer shows up in these tagged items. So that's a way for me to be able to tag it and you can tag it different things or you can even include not research articles like if you're including a Wikipedia page or even if you're job searching and you want all of your jobs just filled out in here. That, those are different options to be able to organize all of these different web pages as you're actually searching. So before I said that you could highlight and then you could see your highlights. So if you come over here, you can go to highlights and then you can actually see which of your items are actually highlighted in here. And then if you want to mark certain as favorites, so if there's certain web pages you're like always going to, you can favorite it and then you're able to see it in your favorites here as well. So that's a few different ways that you can use this. If you're working on organizing your literature, I will leave some videos up here to article summarization tools that might be able to help you do this a little bit faster. And if this video is helpful, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more tips to how to become more efficient in your research. I hope to see you in the next video.